Uh, the film I'm working on is called China's Amazing Rise and what it means for the rest of us. Obviously it has to do with China's development uh, in a superpower which I have no doubt that uh, they will attain the status of a superpower pretty soon, probably sooner than we think. And it's a hugely explosive question. I mean, we have this culture that's been neglected for so long just because the West had a couple of hundred good years, but I have no doubt that China will re-emerge on the world scene and that will affect our lives and the lives of our children for centuries to come. I think we're afraid that that's going to be a negative effect. What's your thought on that? I'm, I'm not taking such a, such a point of view. More than that, I'm trying to devoid myself from from taking a, a position or uh, or being an alarmist. I'm trying to place myself outside our immediate needs. I'm trying to look at the big wheel of history that will not stop for our convenience right now and whether we like it or not, China will come and be present in our lives. Um, no, I, I don't have feelings of uh, anxiety. I know it will be different, but different it's at times good. Uh, let's face it, the West didn't do everything right and uh, and uh, the Chinese culture is very rich and settled and it has a strong philosophical backbone to it and um, I, I have generally a good feeling. And I think one of the amazing things about China is that they've like from z zero have accom accomplished a lot just through you know, hard work. I think the most important thing everywhere is the human capital and in terms of human capital they have never been nothing. Maybe they have been poor but the values of uh, thrift, the values of hard work, the values of uh, education and appreciation for knowledge and culture have always been there I think even in the hardest time. And uh, now they're emerging in something more tangible for us to see in GDP growth and so on, but uh, there's there's surely a long history of invention and uh, and philosophy in China that uh, will uh, prop their future rise. You've been working on this documentary, as far as I know, now for a few months at least. Um, what are some of the things that you've uh, learned along this journey that you didn't know beforehand? That's right. Uh, the first thing I got is a new appreciation for early Chinese culture. Uh, I've been reading Confucius and I've been amazed to find out how he quantified uh, a lot of questions so early, I mean 2,500 years ago. What is the role of government? What is the role of uh, the concept of property? The concept, what are the proper relationships between people? And this is one amazing piece of information that I'm just learning to appreciate. Uh, the other, the other uh, re big revelation is is this renewed admiration for the tenacity of the Chinese people, as a people. And uh, it's amazing, the survival, the upheavals that their country had to go through, and uh, what, a, what a great uh, renaissance they're experiencing right now. So what type of people are you interviewing? I mean, what um, walks of life do they come from, generally? Well, um, I make documentaries in layers, and I think, just like you're, when you paint, and I think the most important layer, and the first one to be made, is the one to, they will, they will lay a strong logical foundation for the film, because if the film doesn't make sense, all the explosions and special effects will not fix it. So for this reason, I'm mainly talking to professors and academics and uh, China experts that have a lot of ideas in principle about what has been happening in China and what will happen. As the project progresses, of course, I want to do a lot of uh, case studies, in particular, 
of industries and how they evolve and how they affect each other here in China and in the United States. Talk about the gentleman we interviewed at UCLA. He was a, uh, actually a Chinese dissident at one time, wasn't he? Um, that's right. One of the most interesting people that will come in uh, to uh, that, will per that participate to this film is Professor Yan from UCLA, professor of anthropology, son of uh, relatively rich people that have been deported in the 70s due to the Cultural Revolution, or the 60s actually. And uh, you know, an amazing life story. I mean, he was banned from school and now he has a PhD and he's teaching at UCLA. And if this is a story of tenacity that alone could warrant a two-hour documentary. You've been to China before. Uh, what was your, I guess, gut-level reaction? I've been to China, Taiwan, and Hong Kong, which are all pretty much Chinese-inhabited territories, about 10 times over the last 10 years. And uh, I, I always felt good. I thought people were kind and polite. Uh, I tapped into the energy of the place, the probably something like Chicago of a hundred years ago. The Wild West is being conquered and somebody is doing something, all the, everybody's doing something all the time. Uh, very dynamic, very innovative, uh, a bit on the rough side, uh, some call it primitive capitalism. And, uh, but the place is happening and to see so many people with so many plans and aspirations is just, uh, is, is very, very alluring and, and seductive in a way. What's that energy like uh, compared with being here at home? Or when you're, when you're here? Oh, United States is still doing pretty well. It's still the capital of innovation. It's still the, especially for us, we live in Orange County, California. I mean, this is a great place to live. There are incredible people living here, doing incredible things in arts, in industry, in business. Um, other parts, you know, there is the Rust Belt, probably they're not doing that well, and my film will have some investigation in that, in those parts. Um, you know, uh, good life is corrupting people at times. Uh, it's hard to keep uh, this level of interest and entrepreneurship when there is no hunger factor.